Hey guys, welcome back. This is Professor Hank, and in this video, we're going to talk about partially filled arrays. Partially filled arrays, right? So, partially filled arrays um, kind of do what the name says, right? You don't fill them up all the way. Um, you use some of the elements, but not all of the elements, okay? Just because you have an array that has a hundred elements in it doesn't mean that you have to actually store data in every single one of those elements. Maybe at one particular instance of time as your program's running, you only need 10 of the elements. So just use the first 10 elements and leave the last 90 uh, elements filled with garbage, right? Then if you need to store an 11th piece of data, well then use one of those 90 garbage elements, right? Replace one of the pieces of garbage with uh, the data that you want to store. Right? So how's this going to work? Well, we're just going to place an abstraction upon our array. We're going to we're going to enforce some rules on how we programmatically interact with that array. So here's some of those rules, right? So what we'll do is, is we'll assume that the valid data, the data that we're storing in the array is going to start at zero, at element zero, I should say, right? At the element with subscript zero. And it's going to end with an element whose subscript we'll keep track of. We'll store it in an, in an, an integer variable, right? And so all of the elements in between from element zero through that element whose subscript is stored in that integer variable, everything in between, that's our valid data. That's all data that we want to keep track of. Okay, everything after the last element, right, in the uh, list of valid data, that's going to be just garbage. Okay, so let's say that we store in an integer variable 5, right? That would be the subscript of the sixth element of the array. So that means that elements 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 are all storing data we want to keep track of. Anything past that, we don't care about. Okay, that's that's garbage. We might use that those elements later, um, you know, or not. It's fine. You don't have to use every single element, right? Just because you've allocated it. Okay. So um, we'll consider the array to be empty, right? Meaning that we haven't stored anything in the array that we care about. If that stored subscript is negative one. We'll choose negative one because um, that's not a valid subscript, right? So if our variable that's storing subscript, the subscript is negative one, that means there's nothing in the array we care about, okay? Now, if the array is full, well, what that's going to mean is that subscript we're storing, it's going to be one less than the size of the array. So what does that mean? Well, let's say you got 10 elements. What's the last valid subscript? Nine, right? So in that integer variable, Nine, right? That's what would be stored. Array is full. We, there's nothing else to. There's no other room. There's no other elements to put data into. So it's over, right? So you update the array. You update that stored subscript as you need it. Okay. So let's look at some code for this, right? So let me go ahead and create uh, an array, right? And we'll make that array have a maximum capacity of I don't know, ten, ten elements, right? So We'll store 10 integers, a list of 10 integers, okay? And um, that means that we're gonna have to add an array. I'll call it list, because we'll store a list of 10 numbers, okay? And remember, we're gonna consider all the data in the array to be data we're interested in, to be valid, to be actual data we're storing. If it starts, if the, if the data starts in element zero and goes up through an element with a certain subscript, right? So we got to keep track of that last element, okay, that, that subscript. So I'll create another variable here, another integer variable, which I'll call uh, last, okay? Now, initially, until I start putting stuff into this array, <clears throat> none of the data in that array is considered good, right? It's all garbage. There's no, I haven't put anything in there yet, right? So this last variable is supposed to be keeping track of the last element, 
know, at the end uh, of my list of stuff I'm storing, that's um, you know going to be valid data, right? So if I haven't put anything in there yet, that means everything's invalid. So there is no valid subscript indicating the last element in the array that is storing good stuff. So I'll use negative one, right? So negative one means empty list, right? Or empty container, or you know this array is empty, right? And again, this is abstract. This is in our abstraction here, right? This is an abstraction we're saying. Negative one means something. I mean, an array is not actually empty. I mean, there's there's garbage in there. But we don't consider anything in that array to be valid data. It's empty of valid data. It's an empty list uh, of data. Okay. Um, now, as we add stuff to it, that's going to have to change. Right? But for right now, it's considered empty. So if last is set to negative one, then you can ask questions about the array, right? About what it's storing. So you could say something if. Uh, something like this. If last is equal to negative one, right? Then you say, well, there's no valid data in the array, right? Or maybe, you know, if we're storing a list of numbers, you could say, um, you know, the list is, you know, quote, empty, right? Uh, because, you know, we're keeping a list of numbers, we haven't stored anything. Everything in our list, even though that array has got garbage in it, who cares? Last is set to negative one, so we consider there to be nothing in that array that we're interested in. Right? So we can test that last variable to see if there's anything in there that we're interested in. No, there's there's not. Right? It's negative one. Theoretically, it's empty. In our abstraction, it's empty. Okay. Now, if I want to add something. If I want to store something uh, in the array, then what I do is, it's a two-step process. Okay, so first thing I do is increment last, okay? So what that'll do is it'll change that negative one to zero, right? So now element zero is the last element in the array that actually has some data in it that I want to store. Okay. Um, now the way we set this up, zero is also element zero is also the first element that has anything in it. Okay, fine. It'll be a one element list of numbers. So the first element is zero. The last element is zero. That's a there's one piece of information in the array that I care about. Okay, so increment last, and then uh, add the data you care about. All right. So. It looks could look something like this: last plus plus, and then I can say list of last is equal to p. Okay, so I've just added one piece of information. Right now, what if I want to add say uh, 99? Right, so I could say uh, increment again, last again, and then I'll say list of last equals 99. Right, so. Right now, I'm only using the first two elements of the array, elements zero and elements one. What does last have after I've incremented it twice, right? It started off with negative one, but I added one one time, and then I added one a second time. So um, last now contains one. So that indicates that element one is the last element in the array that contains something that we care about. Zero is the uh, first element, right? So let's make a little note of that. Zero is the first element of the array we care about that has data we care about. And last is the last element of the array that has that data that we care about, okay? So that means that this element, or this array, excuse me, in its first element has got 88, in its second element it's got 99, and then everything else, garbage. Okay, but I don't care. All I want to do is store 88 and 99 right now. Okay, so if I was gonna print out print out what I care about in the array, okay, 
So my array is holding a list of numbers. That list only has two things in it, 88 and 99. What do you think I want to print out? Right? So, you know, if you've just been getting in this habit of just mindlessly saying, oh, well, uh, for a die equals zero, I less than 10, I plus plus. And when I say 10, I really should write max then, right? Because that's the length of our list. So you might be thinking, well, I am going to, or the length of our array, sorry. Uh, I'm going to just print out the entire array, right? So let's go ahead and do that because that's what you do. You know, you just print out all the single elements. You do it without thinking and you know, without really understanding what you're doing. So that's what you want to have happen, right? Um, no. What happened, right? Um, well, there's my 88, right? There's my 99, and then there's a bunch of garbage, right? Now, where did all that garbage come from? I should probably put a new line after this here. So put a new line, and then run that again, right? And then go through the go through the uh, output from the very, 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 very top, okay? Because we got all this garbage in here. So what's this output? So when the if statement started up, last had negative one in it. And so that was true. And so we said, you know, the list is empty, fine. But then we incremented last plus one, then we added 88 to last, so to list of zero. And then we incremented last, which made it one. Then we added um, to list of last, which is list of one, 99. And then we said, hey, all right, cool. Let's print out the entire array. That's what we did here. So long as i is less than max, so long as i is less than 10. Well, there's 88 in element zero, there's 99 in element one, but then here's all the rest of this garbage. Thanks, right? I didn't put it there. There's no such thing as an empty array. This is just an abstraction. We're saying that our, that our list only has two elements in it. So we only need to have um, two elements of our array storing data. The rest of the stuff is unused right now. Okay, that's fine, it's, it's unused right now. So if all I want to do was print out the data that I'm interested in, print out my list of numbers, don't use max, don't print out the entire array, use last, right, use last. But now here's the thing, I have an off by one error because if I run this now, you'll see all the garbage is gone, right, but where'd my 99 go? Well, remember the valid elements, subscripts, the elements that are containing the data that I'm interested in are zero and one. So last has got one inside of it. So as soon as I becomes one, is one less than one? No. If I want to print out through the end of the data that I'm interested in, I should do I less than or equal to last. Right? Now I'm good to go. 88, 99. Okay, now if I want to add another piece of data, add another piece okay. so then what do I have to do two-part process increment last and then assign the list of last new value right and so now if I want to print it out after doing that let's move that forward down here last now is gonna have two in it 88 is in element 0 99 is element 1 and last is an element 2 so that's our list of numbers stored in the array. We're only interested in the first elements, the first three elements of the array. So we're only having our loop go up through the first three elements of the array. Fine. The last seven elements of the array, we're just not using them yet. Who cares? Right now, let's say I want to get rid of something. Now let's say I want to shrink my list. I want to remove something. Right? I want to move the data at the end of the list, right? At the end of my list of numbers. Well, then all I have to do is go, huh, last, minus, minus, right? So what'll happen then is that last, which was two, becomes one. So the 66 is still in the array at element two, but who cares? It's no longer part of what I consider my valid data, right? So my array has got 88 in the first element, fine. It's got 99 in the second element, fine. 66 is left over in the third element, but what's in last right now? Last after last minus minus has got one in it. So the only data we consider valid is in those first two elements. Sure, 66 is in that third memory location, but who cares? Don't care. 
It's not considered part of um, our list of numbers anymore. It's garbage, just like everything that follows it's garbage. No problem. So now, if I was to print out the contents of the array at that point, right, then what am I going to see? I'm only going to see the 88 and the 99. The 66 is still in there, but I don't care. I'm not interested in that anymore. I don't consider that to be part of my list of numbers that I care about. Even though my array's got 10 elements, I'm only caring about the first two. Right? So, I mean, that's about the basics of it. If I wanted to delete um, 88, you know, for example, or 99, then I got to do a, lot, a bit more work. I'd have to do a bunch of shifting and stuff, which is kind of beyond the scope of what I want to get into um, in this video. So just want to give you the basics of you know what it means to have a partially filled array and uh, basically you got an array and you don't have to use all the elements all the time in the array you can only use part of them and that's totally fine um, so showed you how to do that you know, you've got the capacity of your array and then you've just got a variable that's keeping track of the subscript of the last element in the array that you consider to be um, storing valid data, right? So everything from zero through last is valid data, good data, everything after last. Okay, so that's gonna bring this video to a close. If you felt that the video was useful, please consider giving the video a thumbs up. And if you thought that the video sucked, well, then you've got that thumbs down button as an option as well. If you'd like to see more videos if you're interested in more content from the channel feel free to hit that subscribe button and as usual if you're a student of mine and you have further questions feel free to drop me an email or to stop by my office hours okay thanks for watching and we'll see you next time